Trojan Sports Now. Hello and welcome to Trojan Sports Now. I'm Jamal Kennedy. And I'm Khadija Torber. Stick around as we bring you the latest news and scores from Troy Athletics. The Troy football team fell to the Mississippi State Bulldogs 45-17 on Saturday. By the end of the first half, the Trojans found themselves staring up out of a 38-0 hole. However, the Trojans seemed to come out of guns blazing to start the second half, actually outscoring the Bulldogs. Even though the Trojans lost head coach Neil Brown says the second half play was a matter of accepting responsibility and a challenge. You know, I challenged them at halftime. And I, and I told you this after the game. This wasn't something that – this wasn't – it wasn't a yelling match. It was something that I was disappointed in. Challenged them at the half to come up, to come back out and compete and play the way that we're supposed to play, the, the way that they've been trained to play. One sophomore wide receiver explains what the halftime experience was like and how it motivated him and the rest of the team to pick things up in the second half. He came in, he didn't, he didn't like, you know – get too angry he was just like this is on y'all um you just gotta focus up man up and uh, finish the game you don't want to be looked at like quitters and that's what our goal was to go out in the second half and not quit and just go out and finish and show that we can play with whoever Despite the deficit, the Trojans came out in the second half and put up 17 points on the board highlighted by one run in particular that captured everyone's attention second down he'll go hand off to Burks and he spins out a trouble breaks free stays on his feet now a foot race to the 30 to the 20 Burks cuts it back he will head to the end zone touchdown Troy and they stepped up and that gives me that gives me hope moving forward um, and I think that and, and I really hope that looking back that's going to be a pivotal moment in our in our season and, and in our program Dontrell Pruitt ended the game as Troy's leading passer, completing 12 passes for 90 yards over 17 attempts. Burks led the team in rushing yards with 86 on 15 carries, with Pruitt not far behind with 56 yards on 18 rushes. The Trojan volleyball team kept their win streak alive over the weekend with a pair of victories against the Sun Belt's Louisiana teams. Khadija Torbert has the highlights from Friday's shutout victory over ULM. The volleyball team took on the ULM Warhawks Friday night in Trojan Arena. Head coach Sonny Kirkpatrick says his team communicated well overall to get this week and is glad the win streak is still in motion. We had some limited practice opportunities to try to be ready for tonight and I'm really proud of our team uh, for their mental preparation and for studying the game plan and, and knowing what what we were trying to do and, and I thought we did a really nice job of taking care of the ball on our side and uh, you know we, we always try to concentrate on our side and when we do that I think we're okay. I thought we played pretty well tonight. It was good to see, uh, stay on a little bit of a roll. Uh, actually, the crowd and the, and the band are amazing, and we can't thank them enough. Netted balls, missed serves, and only 24 kills against Troy. ULM forced a lot of points for the Trojans with 19 errors, which were ultimately in Troy's favor. I like to think we had something to do with some of their errors. Uh, our errors, they definitely had stuff to, to do with that too. but. Uh, you know, it comes down to as long as we, we get a good quality first touch uh, and we stay in system, our offenses can run pretty well. Um, and, and I thought that, that we did a good job tonight after the first game. First game was kind of shaky, but uh, I thought the second and third games we really did a nice job of taking care of our ball. Feeding off the other opponent may not be a bad thing. It definitely earned the volleyball team a sweep tonight. It was great to be aware of that, but also I feel like our energy was so big tonight I would say that we sucked some of their energy so that helped us like see the game more and control the game more for our advantage. Like we wanted to get done tonight because we have to prepare for tomorrow so we really worked hard every point to make sure that we could rest tonight to be prepared for ULL tomorrow. Khadija Torber, Trojan Sports Now. It took four sets on Saturday but the Trojans were able to complete the weekend sweep. The Troy Volleyball team rebounded from a first loss and took control the rest of the way, beating UL Lafayette 3-1. After losing the first set and dominating the second set, Troy faced multiple set points as UL Lafayette led the third set 24-21. It was then that Landis recorded three straight kills for the Trojans to the score of 24-24. Rana Terry posted a double-double with 41 assists and 15 digs. Ali Dadell led the way with 25 digs, holding the Raging Cajuns. And on Tuesday night in Trojan Arena, the Trojans took on outer conference opponent Florida A&M and collected their sixth win in a row, taking down the Rattlers three sets to two in front of a record-breaking crowd. Rachel Wilkerson has the wrap-up. 
The Florida A&M Rattlers made the plays they needed to in order to win the close second and third sets against the Trojans. Florida A&M played a heck of a match. They really came after us on, in games two and three, uh, totally dominated that part of the match, and we had to really fight and claw and try to figure some things out. And luckily, we, we made the plays we had to in order to, to pull out a win in game five. Despite the rough start, the large crowd boosted the team's confidence as they pulled out another fifth set win. It's, it's wonderful. Uh, I, I really don't want to make a habit of it. Uh, it's really hard on, on your heart uh, to be able to not really do much and, and watch watch the plays unfold. But, you know, it, it does create some character. It gives us the confidence that, uh, that we didn't necessarily have this time last year. And, you know, if we keep playing well and, and keep playing hard, we've always said when we play hard, we always have a chance to win. Um, you know, we, we, I like our chances. Team fed off of a Troy volleyball record crowd of 2,021 fans. Oh my goodness, the, the crowd was amazing. The band, the, uh, the group, uh, the, the fraternity that did the national anthem from, from start to finish was amazing. Uh, I think we probably set an all-time record for, for attendance for a volleyball match. And uh, we couldn't thank our fans and our, and our band and, and our everyone else out there that was rooting for us enough. It was a, an amazing atmosphere. And uh, to, to pull out a win in front of them, it, it really makes me feel good about what our team accomplished tonight. The Trojans struggled in the beginning from lack of experience and didn't make the big plays they needed. We, we came out and, and we wanted to try to get some, some folks some experience. And uh, unfortunately, we didn't put the effort in um, in order for us to keep them in there. We had Lauren Long did a great job in the front row. Uh, you know, we got Taylor Kettle in there for the first time this year. We got Kaylee Carr in there, and they did a nice job. Uh, unfortunately, the, the team in general didn't play as well as they needed to, and, uh, you know, it's unfortunate. Rachel Wilkerson, Trojan Sports Now. Darby Griff led the way for the Trojans with 14 kills and 8 blocks. Allie Dowdell led all players in digs with 23, while Alicia Heinrichs posted her, her first double-double with 23 assists and 10 digs. Troy finished the AutoTrader.com Collegiate Classic in third place behind the Clayton Vanoy's 1 over 73 final round score. The team as a whole finished one shot ahead of Conference Georgia State and 10 shots ahead of South Alabama, taking their record to 12 and 1 against Conference opponents. Vanoy himself finished fourth overall individually, shooting three under 213. It is Vanoy's second top 10 finish and third top 25 finish in the four tournaments that Troy has played. Jared Betcher secured his second top 10 finish of the season. Troy Junior Fatima Fernandez Cano was named the Sunbelt Conference Women's Golfer of the Month for the third time in her career. Last season, Cano was named the Golf Week National Player of the Week after she set the Troy record with a six under 210 at the John Kirk Panther Intercollegiate. Troy soccer returned home this weekend and took all six points from Friday and Sunday. William McCarthy has the highlights from Sunday's matchup. It was six out of six for Troy soccer this weekend. The team swept the weekend grabbing six points out of six after beating Texas State 4-1 on Friday and beating Appalachian State 3-0 on Sunday. In the first half on Sunday, it was all Troy, creating chances but couldn't find the back of the net. The biggest chance for Troy in the first half fell to Robin Ann Whitaker when a pass from Chelsea Williams came through the Mountaineer defense, giving Whitaker a one-on-one -on -one chance with the Mountaineer goalie. At the end of the first half, the score was nil-nil. Troy had control of possession and had seven shots on target then to Appalachian State's four. Troy got off to a great start in the second half by creating more chances for a goal. In the 53rd minute, Troy broke the deadlock off a corner kick from Kristen Rendell and finding the head of Jasmine Farnbauer for the goal. It was the senior's first goal of the season. A minute later, Troy strikes again to make it 2-0 as Alyssa Jones scores from 30 yards out. 15 minutes left to go in the game, Troy seals the deal and took all three points as Alyssa Jones gets her second goal of the game, striking the ball just inside the 18-yard box, making the score 3-0 in favor of Troy. At the end of the game, it was 6-6. Six six. Troy Soccer is on a four-match win streak in conference play with a record of four wins and one loss, giving the Trojans 12 points in the Sunbelt Conference standings and in second place behind first place, South Alabama. Head coach Jason Hamilton wasn't pleased with his team about the first half results, 
but was happy with how his team came out in the second half with more energy and creating more chances. He talks about how valuable this weekend was heading into the last bit of games in the season. This we knew this was going to be a tough uh, a tough weekend at home. You know, two very good teams and two teams that were on the top half of the table. So we uh, you know we knew if we control our own our own fate here. So if we won both games this weekend, we would be in second place alone, um, and that's where we wanted to be. So uh, you know now we've got to take you know go to go down to Georgia Southern and Georgia State and two teams who are again they're they're up there in the top five uh, and, and teams that I would expect to finish there. So they're they're not going to be easy games. We just have to make sure we're prepared, then go out and execute our game plan. We should be in good shape. William McCarthy, Trojan Sports Now. Mickey Lewis's performance has earned her the Sunbelt Conference Student Athlete Defensive Player of the Week. Still to come on Trojan Sports Now, we'll have a feature story coming up about the Idaho football team and how they're preparing for homecoming week. But first, Ron Renfro sits down with senior offensive lineman Dalton Bennett. Stick around for more Trojan Sports Now. <laughs> 